OK, so I've got a few minutes left. So uh, I said if there was time, I would talk about where the patterns on the shells come from. Okay? Now, these shells, you know, they're growing living organisms. Okay? And as the, uh, as the shell grows, new cells are created. So you can imagine, let's focus our attention now on the lip of the shell generating curve, you know, where the cells are laid down and, and make, make more tissue. And if you take an electron micrograph of the mollusk mantle, as it's called, you know, the cells on that growing edge, you, and you see that they stain for so-called epithelial cells and nerve axons. Okay? And what we know is that these epithelial cells can express a pigment which colors them. This is, the, this is part of the, the coloring that you see on a normal shell shape. Okay? So this is a little cartoon here. I just want to focus you to focus on this, this little part here. So these little squares with the circles in represent cells, and they all line up on the, uh, on the lip of the, uh, of, of the shell shape. And these cells can express a pigment. And you can think of that pigment as being sort of black or, or white, you know, non-colored or, or non-colored. OK? <clears throat> um, and as the cell grows, it's the expression of this pigment that gives rise to the, to the, to the pattern that you see on, on the shell. OK? So I've got a little cartoon here of these cells on the mollusk mantle. And you see I've colored some of them white and some of them black. So the black ones you can think of are the ones where the cells have expressed a pigment. That's the color you would see. Okay? And as the shell grows, okay, another layer of cells is laid down next to that shell, next to that layer. But the pigment pattern could be different. Okay? And this pigment pattern is under the control of the nervous system of the animal. Okay? This is where neuroscience gets involved. The pigment isn't laid down at random. The nervous system helps to choose the pigments that are laid down. Here's a nice pattern that you see on a, on a conus textile. And you see the, uh, these little triangles that emerge. Okay? So what I want us to imagine is that we're going to develop a sort of a one-dimensional strip model for the edge of the shell shape. And I'm going to keep growing that and see what patterns I get. And then you have to wrap those back onto the shell surface. Okay? So I'm not going to start with a biological model. I'm just going to start with a, a so-called cellular automata model that generates nice patterns. Because the way I've drawn it here, this does, if you're a mathematician, look very reminiscent of a so-called cellular automata. And so, cellular automata are basically mathematical models or rules that tell you, if given the state of the network, how to create the state of the network at the next time step. So you can think of this. This is time now. These are all the cells in the mollusk mantle. And this is the next time you know, after cell division. It is. So people have heard about uh, Conway's life model. That's a cell automata. The game of life is a cell automata. Basically, there's a grid with a local set of rules, and the rules update, and you get some dynamical system emerging. And the rule I'm going to focus on now is a very famous rule. It's called Wolfram's Rule 30. But I'm going to use it as a model of developing pigmentation patterns. What we're going to start with is these numbers, 1, 1, 1. Okay? And I want you to think of this as this one here, this middle entry, is a cell. And this cell is expressed a pigment. It's a black cell. The guy to the left of it, he's also black. And the guy to the right of him, he's also black. And the rule is, if you're black and your neighbors are black, then in the next generation, when the next cell gets laid down and pigmented, he becomes white. Okay? And these are all the rules. Okay? And it's a binary network that takes three states and gives you one state. Okay? And you can think of this in the language of binary numbers. Okay? If I list these out and ask you to think of this. This is the entry describing 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 squared, 2 cubed, 2 to the 4, etc. You get a, a, you know, a base 10 representation, which is the number 30. Okay? So this is why it's called rule 30, because these numbers here add up in base 10 to the value 30. If you think about how many possible rules of there are there of this type, well, in this entry, 1, 1, 1 could either go to 0 or to 1. So there's two choices here. There's two choices here, two here, two here, two here. That's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's 2 to the power of 8. There are 256 rules you can make up of this type. And people have made them up and played with them. But this one happens to give nice patterns. Okay? And I'll show you some of the patterns that emerge. So let's start the system off mostly white, a couple of black spots, mostly white. Okay? I apply these rules. And the next step, I'll get that. Okay? You can see here, there's, here's a black guy. He's got, he's, his neighbors are off and on. So I would be looking at the rule for 0, 1, 1. But I look it up in here. 0, where is it? Uh, 0, 1, 1. If you're a 0, 1, 1, you go to a black square in the next iteration. There it is. Okay? So we keep applying these little rules. And we build up these patterns. 
And it's hard to see by hand what this pattern's going to do. So now I just wrote a computer program to generate this. Okay? And what you see is this sort of picture. And hopefully you see here, you believe me, there's some triangles emerging. I didn't put the triangles in by hand. Okay? It's not obvious from the rules that the triangles are going to emerge, but they did. And now you have to, in your ha heads, wrap this onto one of the shapes I've generated for you. And uh, we say this is a model of the Conus textile. Okay. This is a made-up rule. Okay, it's nothing to do with the biology of the animal. Okay, how does the animal make this pattern in practice? It doesn't know about Wolfram's Rule 30, that's for sure. It's driven by neural activity. Okay? So the neural activity model is more detailed than the Rule 30 model. It keeps track of the pigmentation in cell I at time t and it keeps track of a so-called inhibitory substance in cell I at time t. And there are some equations in motion that evolve these two uh, variables forward in space and time that are under the control of the nervous system of the animal. Okay. Now, I'll write down the equations here, just for fun. But the key thing is that what this says is somehow this value r at the next time step, this is what t plus 1 means, is some function of the pigmentation and r at the last time step. Okay, so it's a rule that allows you to take steps forward in time. The pigmentation rule itself is more complicated. It depends upon the pigmentation at other sites in the network. This is what this sum here over J means. It means look around you, look over your neighborhood, and weight up the contributions from your neighbors before you make a decision whether to turn from white to black or black to white. And this function here, S, is a nonlinear function. And to get interesting behavior in so-called dynamical systems, you need nonlinearities. And if we evolve these models forward in time, and this is, we saw the, this is the, the shell lip, and this is time, you can get more exotic patterns. This isn't so much more different than rule 30, but it's in color now, okay? I don't have to restrict myself to on and off, okay? These functions here can take values on naught one. Okay, so if we apply these models, can we get even better matches to the natural world? Well, yes, we can. Some of these, these pictures come in pairs. One's a math model, one's a real model, okay? And because it's a bit out of focus, it's pretty hard to tell which is which, okay? So down, let's pick this one. So there's a real shell, and this is a math model shell, okay? It's got the right geometry, it's got the right patterning, okay? And this is just using these rules of geometry combined with the appropriate dynamics, and the appropriate dynamics respects biological reality. It knows about pigmentation cells, it knows about inhibitory substances, it knows about neurons. So, you know, is there a link between rule 30 and this biological rule? Well, there is. If I just focus on the, the pigment rule I had, which says the pigment at the next time step is some nonlinear function of the weighted sum of pigments at the last time step, okay? You can actually generate rule 30. You can make a link to biological modeling. If I take this function S to have a certain shape and this neighborhood function to have a certain shape, and they're very simple shapes I have to make choices for. If I say, I'm going to talk, in this graph, naught means I talk to myself. So this is how the rule, uh, this is how you affect your next state. If you're to left of me, this is like a model for your left neighbor, and this is a model for your right neighbor. But the basic rule is, if you talk more strongly to the guy on your left than the guy on your right, and you choose a nonlinear function s, which is basically off, if this argument is uh, below 1, and off if it's above 3, okay, these two choices in this model actually generate the rule 30. And I'm going to leave that as an exercise. You should all be able to go through by hand and check that. But so we've made a link now between our neural model and rule 30. Okay? So Stephen Wolfram and his colleagues probably weren't thinking about shell patterning when they wrote down rule 30. They were just thinking about fun dynamical systems. But there is a link here to the, to the biological world. OK, so this is my favorite uh, picture of a seashell. This is the Lyria. And I'll stop there. <laughs>